Hey, Justin from Gold Penguin here, and I wanted to make an updated tutorial on using the layout controls and breakdance. The last time I did a video on this was two years ago at this point, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, not much has changed to the actual design, but things are easier to manage and wanted to go over all of the elements that anyone might be looking to use if you're starting a website from scratch. Uh, I built this in about two minutes and you could do the same. Uh, it's pretty simple. A breakdance does have its own sections and templates internal to the website where you can have this done automatically and they look even prettier because they have other designs added onto them. But the purpose of this is to kind of show you that you can do this too and it's not that hard. You just have to understand a few concepts. Uh, so here we go. Uh, let me explain how everything works. So when you're on a breakdance website, you have a few things. You've got your sections, your columns, your grids, your divs. These are all the same kind of web development, uh, web design layout elements, and you'd find this on any website, even if you go inspect an element on apple.com or something. Uh, sections are gonna be the biggest thing. I put everything in my sections. You should kind of use these as the biggest container or buckets on your website. Uh, then you'll have your columns, which is if you wanna lay things out in somewhat of a grid like this. Uh, you also have grid layout, which is uh, separate. I'll explain that. Uh, and then you will have divs. So I'm a big fan of sections and divs. I think Breakdance kind of gives you the power to just use these elements and pretty much do everything with it. So I'm going to add a section to this website. The, the end goal is to recreate this, uh, but I'll do it a little bit slower than that. I'm going to kind of walk through some things. Um, so the first thing is let's add some divs to this page. Divs are just going to separate the content that we have on the page. As we can see from default, we've got their stacking just like this, but let's say you don't like that because I don't, I want these things to be side by side. So I'm gonna go into the layout and I'm gonna change this from instead of being vertically stacked, which is what this means, let's do it horizontally stacked. Let's keep things all uh, in a nice order like this. So inside of these divs, I can now add things to it. Let's say I want to add an image. Boom, we have an image box, as you could see, that it's inside of the div. Now, for this one, let's add something else to it. Um, maybe we add, let's add a button. And for this one, we can add a, an icon into it. So this looks vile, right? Uh, it's gonna take some time to look nice, but let's say we want to select one of our images. We could do this gold penguin logo. We've got this button, we've got this icon, and we see that they all take up a different amount of space on the screen. Uh, and the reason for this is whatever the size of this picture is, it's gonna be take up full length. We can change this if we only want this picture to uh, take up a certain amount of space, we can change the container spacing on here. We could change this to 40%. So now this image is gonna take up 40% of the page. We could do 80% and you could see it takes up this much of the page. This is the div. But the image doesn't fully reflect because it wouldn't be able to. If this image was stretched across this, it would look really ugly. The penguin would be stretched out like, like horizontally. So this is only going to be relative to kind of its aspect ratio. But if you want this now with to be, let's say 200 or 300 or 500 or 800, uh, once it exceeds the actual width of the image, it's going to stop doing that. But the actual container will continue. So we have the image going up to here and then we say, hey, look, the div goes out a bit more. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't kind of hard code your width properties because then you're gonna run into issues with different uh, device sizes. And what if you're using a phone that has a 400 viewport with an 800 width? Let's see what that looks like. Uh, actually, it, it collapses on itself, so we don't need to worry about that. But yeah, um, I kinda wanna show some more stuff into like responsiveness. And so if you're dealing with three elements like this, what I would do is add a column to the page. And columns are gonna kind of automatically format the issue that we're seeing right here. If I go into columns and I move these, oops, I'll move them into a new section. Uh, if I want to make three columns, now I ignore the divs. I could just move this image into here, button into here, and icon into here. And they each take up 33% of their respective container. You could see right here, you could see this outline for this one and this outline for this one. If we click on the columns, we could see this entire element is the columns, but the individual columns are like this and they have things in them that are smaller or take up the same size as the rest of them. So that's kind of the gist of that. 
Now we can do the same things in the sections that we were talking about below. I'm going to, let's just add for the sake of simplicity, let's add three pictures in here. We're gonna add these, and I'm now gonna change the format to be grid layout. And this makes things a lot easier to manage. I'm gonna delete this older column because it's ugly. Uh, and now this is another layout option that we have with these sections. So if we don't want things to be stacked, if we don't want them to be hugging each other perfectly like this, go into grid layout. It keeps things a lot easier. Let me go ahead and duplicate these a few more times just to give a few more elements on the page. So now uh, you could really mess around with it. You could do two things, you could do three things per row, you could do six, you could do seven and keep everything onto this row. Uh, you could add more or less spacing between items. If you want them to hug each other, there's zero. If you wanna add 10, thing, 10 pixels of spacing, 20 pixels, 30, so on and so forth. Uh, and now if we change this to tablet, we could see that it's gonna keep shrinking until nothing happens. Okay. This is kind of hard to see on mobile, right? You have a, a nice section. These logos look great on your desktop for any, any all device widths and you know, it looks fine. But as you start going down, let's say once you hit the phone, this is pretty hard to see. I can't really see this so well, right? So uh, I'm gonna click on the viewport changer and let's click on 479 pixels and below, which is what we have automatically set in our settings. This is gonna be anything for the phone. Now on the phone, I only want it to display two columns. Well, that's probably not the best in practice, but I'm not a designer. I can just move things around. Anyways, uh, on desktop, you're going to see we've got seven items per row. And on the phone is when it shrinks down to two. Any other point before this is still going to have our seven. And that's not good. But um, grid layout is probably the best way that you can do this. If you don't want to deal with this kind of headache, I would say go and use columns, which is just by adding a section to the page by adding the columns and saying, hey, I only want this to be three. Uh, let me copy this image, move it in here. I only want this to be three, these columns. And then when you are on phone, we're gonna stack these things vertically. So until then, here we go, here we go, and then boom. Now they're gonna be stacked. So you could really do similar things depending on what you are trying to do. Uh, columns are easier because they have the layout figured out kind of immediately, but if you want to go through the section and change it to the, the grid section, you can customize quite a bit of things that you have here. Uh, now let's go ahead and recreate this here and let's make it responsive. What I did just notice is when I collapsed the page into tablet portrait mode, this didn't look good. Maybe up to landscape, this looks good, but once you hit tablet portrait, this breakpoint, I actually don't like this. I see that we've got these three columns here and I don't think it looks good. So I'm going to click on columns. I'm gonna go into the layout, and instead of stacking it vertically on phone portrait, let's do it on tablet portrait. I think that's a better breakpoint because it still looks good on here, but once we're here, I think this looks a lot better. I'd also want to add some spacing, but okay, whatever. We're gonna we're gonna remake this. Uh, yeah. So if you want to kind of create a three by three layout, I'm using columns for the sake of this. I will add a section, and let's move it up here. This is your basic building block of building things in breakdance. Go ahead and click on your background color. Uh, for this case, I am going to give it a, oh, that's, that's hard on the eyes. Uh, I will do a, wow, this is the hardest part of the video. Uh, let's do kind of a purple color. Now we can add columns and format these in a, uh, okay, we could do, let's do a one by two for this example. Uh, inside of the column, if we want to mirror what we did before, we're going to add an image and then we need a heading and we need text in all of these. So I can go ahead and just add an image. I can add a heading and I can add text. This looks very different than below. Uh, there's a few things that need to be changed. First of all, the logo up here kind of goes outside of the column. Okay, so how do we do that? We need to get to that. Uh, we can see there's some spacing issues here, like the font size is huge and this is small. And then we don't have a background. Uh, that's just a column thing. So we've got a few things to fix and then we can move things around and make it look pretty and fix the padding. So for the column, go ahead and click inside of here and go to background and let's add a white background color. I think that'll be the easiest on the eyes to view. Same thing in this column. I'm gonna add another white background color, close it like that. And I'm gonna add these uh, images to both of these. So let's move this here. Okay, we've got these two blank images Oh, my foot just fell asleep. Okay. <laughs> um, we've got these two blank elements in here and we can now customize these. 
Uh, I'm gonna choose a picture. Let's do this gold penguin logo. Let's do the same thing here. Actually, we can make it the lighter color just for a little bit easier viewing. Uh, still looks kind of a mess. And the reason it does that is I'm gonna set an actual width for this image. I don't want it to take up the container width. I think this image should be pretty small. And the way that we're gonna do this is go to image and change the width. You could also change max width, which is likely a better principle for doing things. Cause if we make this width, let's say 500, well, that's not gonna work cause the container's not big enough. Uh, we can do it on here. Let's change this image. If we say 300, 400, 500, you see how it gets bigger. But on a phone, this isn't really gonna look good. And I do believe Breakdance is gonna keep this kind of contained, so it's actually not gonna look too bad. It, it only hugs this element. Uh, what you might notice is if you set an explicit width of something that goes beyond whatever the either uh, device or the container can hold, it's gonna pull out of it. Um, if it's bigger than what the what your actual screen size can hold, but it's saying, hey, we need this to be 500 pixels, even though the phone is only 400 pixels wide, or if that's your breakpoint, you're gonna run into some issues. So what I like to do is set this to be a, you could also do minimum, minimum width, but you could say the maximum width of this is 500, meaning it can be smaller. I'm not gonna say it's required to be this, but it also cannot be bigger than 500. So let's do that and let's make this 300. I think that's a good number for the sake of this. Let's do 300 here as well. Actually, this is huge. We're still gonna do it though. All right, we'll do 200, we'll compromise. Let's do 200. Uh, and I also, 200. Okay, uh, still doesn't really look similar to below. One thing you might've noticed is we have a div here that are holding the elements in the text. I do this because I'm not gonna be adding padding to this element. As you can see, this goes all the way here. There's a very little gap between this picture and the left side of this container. But if we go here, we can see that there's padding. This still hugs the left. It still is the same thing, but we added padding in between just to make it look nicer because this doesn't really look good. This can look good, um, but I don't think this will. So to do this together, we'll add a div to the page and add a heading and add text inside of it, just like this. It still looks the exact same, nothing changed, but now we're gonna manipulate things together instead of individually. Let's go to the container. Let's add some padding. If we hit the apply all button, anything I type here will get applied to all sides. So if I type 20, we can see we've got 20 pixels of padding everywhere. I don't like this on top, so I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna delete the, I'm gonna make this zero. So we have no padding on top. As we can see, this element right here hugs the top but everywhere else we've got 20 pixels. We've got from the left, the right, the bottom, not just not the top. Okay, so we're getting closer. Um, now I'd say we can go ahead and focus on this image. And so why, how did we get this image to be pulling out over here? And the way you do that is by adding a margin to this picture. So because we're just trying to apply it to this, this alone, we don't wanna to touch the column, we don't wanna to touch the div or, or the actual columns element. We just wanna make this image protrude a little bit upward. And the way that you do that in HTML is you add a negative margin to things. Remember that padding is going to be inside of the element. So we have our div here and we have our padding, which is the small blue box. That is 20 pixels of padding on the left side and the right side. And we could see it on the bottom from this blue line all the way to the bottom over here. That's 20 pixels. But margin is going to be outside of the element. It's not going to be going within. It's going to be going outside. So if we change the spacing to negative 30, we now have a, an image that goes outside of the column viewport. Uh, I don't like that it hugs the side here. So I'm going to add maybe a little bit of padding. Uh, if I can in the actual column, let's add some spacing on the left side. Let's do another 10 pixels of spacing. So this added 10 pixels here, which is applied to this entire element. And since we have this div that has 20 pixels of padding, we have an additional 20. So the div itself has 30, the image itself has 10, and then the column itself has its 10 as well, because this doesn't get applied to anything other than what are the rules that we set for the column. So I think this looks good. Uh, kind of getting closer to what we're looking for. So let's call this custom websites and we can copy the sample text here and we're going to do the same thing on this side uh, this is definitely bigger and this one will be also add i think i did negative 20 
did I do negative? Oh, I did negative 30. Wow. Negative 30. And then inside of here, we will add spacing of 10 pixels on this side. And we can now add, I'm going to copy and paste this div by clicking on it here, selecting the main column, and then command Ving it back into here. So now we still have this here. Uh, and something about this doesn't look right because there's not enough text. But uh, if you don't have enough text, something that you can do is set a maximum width of this div. So if you want some extra white space over here, you can go into the container, change this to a percentage, and this is going to be relative to the parent element, which is whatever's bigger than the div. And right now, if I do 80, you can see the parent div goes up to this is 100, here's 80. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. Now, if we change this to our different viewpoints, we can see that we have this automatic stacking already. It goes down. This one looks good too, because we changed this earlier. So I would say there's not many changes that we need to make. The only thing that st stuck out to me immediately on tablet is this image touches the top, top thing over here. So there's two ways that we could do this. I could either lower the amount of margin by making this zero or making this negative, negative 10, or we could just add more spacing in between the actual column one and column two, which I think is kind of the approach that I want to take to do this. So I'm going to add a 20 pixel. Oh, it's going to be more than that. Let's add a 60 pixel column gap only when we're on tablet landscape. When we're on here, I think this gap looks completely fine. But as we go down, I think this is more appropriate. How does it look on a phone? It looks great. And now it's kind of working. So something else that I just noticed, let's go back to tablet, is this text still looks decent. This looks good. This is a nice uh, poppy, you know, box. But as we go down tablet, I'd say this is, you could still get away with it here just for my own. Okay, this is where you kind of really notice it, is that this text should take up this whole screen. Same thing with here. This might be able to fit on one line. Um, but, but now we have a div that's still set at 80% width. So how do we fix that? Well, once we're on mobile or whatever the view, the breakpoint is that you're trying to edit, you can go back into the width and you could see that we've already changed some settings somewhere. So this is like saying, hey, this is only for the, this viewport or belower. So now let's change this to a percentage and we're going to change it back to 100. I also want this to be a little bit smaller, the typography, if we're going to hard set it. Let's do 30 pixels or 40 pixels. Uh, so now it fits uh, a little bit nicer, at least uh, on on a different screen size. We could also change this heading size and typography to be 30 pixels, 40 pixels. Uh, and that's only gonna take place when we change the layout. So I could save this page and that's pretty much it. We have a design, it looks nice. Uh, we played with a few elements. If you wanna get kind of creative with it, you could take the actual column and go have some fun, go into borders, go ahead and add a shadow. You can see this little black shadow that's under it now. Uh, there you go, now it's really obvious, now it's not. You can make it whatever color you want, change the opacity of it, and that looks a little bit nicer. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of the intro to how these things work in breakdance. If uh, I, I kind of like the design of having the, I don't know the percentage, this is like 20%, 80%, or 30%, 70% of the, the way that the, these columns were formatted. Uh, let's see if we could go and find it. 35% and 65%. Okay, so when I clicked on that button, it, it automatically did this for me. If I wanna change this to 50, we have things side by side and it should adaptively change this, but uh, sometimes it might not, so you have to be, be careful. I come from oxygen, so sometimes oxygen just screws you and you're like, why is it not working? And then you realize you didn't change the other one and it didn't responsively adapt and whatever. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's it for this video. I hope this kind of gave a better understanding into how sections work, how columns work, how the individual columns work, and then how you can use divs to kind of really just design your site, format it in a way that you want uh, with mobile responsive controls. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, I will do my best to answer everything anyone has. Uh, if you found anything wrong or incorrect or something that you wanted to point out, please let me know as well. Uh, and yeah, subscribe and leave a comment if uh, you liked the video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.